ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to Money Talk with Melanie. Freestyle Finance Friday. We are in the process of trying to get the benevolent beauty queen on the air with us right now. There have been a number of difficulties. Uh, <laughs> in terms of technical. But we're so glad to have her uh, with us. We are attempting to get in contact with her right now. I, I mean, she is the business diva. That's B-I-D-N-E-S-S. -S, business diva. Uh, talking about money, finance, politics, economics, the whole gamut. We're trying to get her on the line even as we speak. Uh, we have been unsuccessful in doing so. Uh, so <laughs> we are going to do our very best. Uh, at this particular moment. Uh, in fact, let me try something here. Um, let me try something and see if this might work. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, we are trying to get her. She's having internet technology issues. I, I mean, and, and she is a technology guru in and of her own right. Uh, but apparently, she's having a difficult time uh, with that. Um, I, I, I'm trying to connect with her on her phone at this moment, and uh, we're going to do our very best to present to you the best at <laughs> Freestyle Finance Friday. Uh, I, I, I am the exceptional one, Ken McClinton. I am the chairman of the Exceptional Conservative Network and host of the Exceptional Conservative Show, uh, New Day Black and Red, and also an American Conservative's exploration of the inspired word of God. I know this is not the pretty face you expected to hear from uh, on this Friday afternoon, uh, but we're going to do our very best uh, in, in terms of connecting with her uh, via phone. Uh, and what I'm going to do at this moment, uh, uh, we are going to uh, take a quick break here. And, and, and mind you, uh, I, I want you to know that I am not as brilliant as the doctoral student. Uh, known as uh, the beautiful one, Melanie. <laughs> I'm not as brilliant as she, but I do have some wisdom in terms of finance, economics, and so on. Uh, so, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think we have an answer. Uh, good day, good morning. Uh, good morning. All right, we have the business diva hotel. The Bidden Neva uh, <laughs> on the air with us right now. And I want to make sure that I have all the settings ready to rock and roll because this is certainly your ride and not mine. Uh, I am honored uh, for my first appearance on Money Talk with Melanie on Freestyle Finance Friday. And I'm going to step up out of your way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nope. No problem at all. Thank you so much for being on the show this morning. It is a it is a uh, a very crisp uh, and cold, uh, about eighteen degrees down here in uh, Cape May County, which which I am not I'm not very happy about. I, I, to, to say that I'm less than delighted would would be um, an understatement. Uh, <laughs> but it's freezing. And I am not happy about that at all. But um, uh, as, as always, I'll start out with a little uh, editorial report, if you will. Uh, by the way, uh, I, I didn't hear the beginning of the show because my gremlin was at it again, running around here, I don't know, unplugging networks and, and causing all kinds of problems with my internet. So I didn't hear your opening if you introduced yourself or not. Oh, well, Can you introduce yourself, Mr. McClinton? Well, I was looking in the mirror at the time, and <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> you did? Okay. <laughs> All right, very good. Well, let's see what's happening. The biggest thing that's happening right now is, of course, as anticipated, um, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals uh, rejected, uh, rejected uh, the Trump administration's 
appeal to have the restraining order lifted on everyone anticipating. Now, this is the thing that really ticked me off and which, you know, as long as I've been involved in politics, I should have known better. But from what I understand, the, they had uh, the state of Washington suit on purpose because they knew it would go to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is notoriously um, notoriously liberal and gets about 90% of their uh, court cases overturned, which you would think would be a red flag to them that perhaps they need a little tutorial on the Constitution. But that's <laughs> <laughs> but that's another story. So this is good. so they're deciding what to do. But now that we have uh, Jeff Sessions this morning yesterday as um, our new Attorney General, uh, hopefully we're going to get that squared away. It's time to. Uh, it, it, I suspect that um, that the the AGs from the previous administration um, just messed over the Trump administration. That I think was really weak. I mean, heck, Tucker Carlson is a, a lawyer, and he came up with better arguments than the Attorney General did on behalf of the Trump administration. He had um, the Washington State uh, AG on last night, and one of the things that he said was. Uh, well, you have you make good arguments, Tucker, but the eight the, the the feds never made that argument, and I and I just thought to myself, wow. Um, so you know, I think it was a I think they made a purposely weak case. I think the whole thing was you know completely contrived. So that just you know completely. Thanks. Not, uh, like, uh, not, not liking that at all. May I ask? Um, you, may I ask you a question, Miss Melanie? May, may I? Ask certainly. You? Okay. Certainly. All right, well, well, thank you very much. But uh, is this all just uh, for show? Uh, what's going on by the Democrats regarding the immigration? Uh, that simply that you know, to be earnest, they can't do anything to stop Donald Trump if they really were to oh. enforce the law, right? I think I think we missed each other. Uh, are you are are you there? Oh, I'm not hearing you. I didn't hear the last. Okay. I'm here now. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Can you hear okay, me? Okay, good. Okay, good. great. Uh, I can hear you now too. I think I think it's just windy and we're having a bad connection. Exactly. Out. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, no problem. You're still only about sixty seconds from your break, so go ahead and finish your thoughts. <laughs> No, I was to say I'm sorry. I, I apologize. It's, no like, problem. it's so windy out here, and I, I think it's uh, I think it's affecting the connection. No, my thought was that it was that that they completely intentionally that the whole thing they intentionally screwed up this case. The whole thing with with uh, having you know there were there were tons and tons of lawsuits, but they do it because they knew it would end up in the Ninth Circuit. So I, you know. I, I, it's just a bad situation. And I mean, how how well do you do your job when you know you're about to be replaced? <laughs> okay, I can tell you, I left my job about a month ago. <laughs> Am I going to say that that the kids received my top notch A plus teaching my last like two or three days? I, I don't think I can commit to that. Yeah, that's what yeah. Saying. We'll, we'll we'll keep that one off the records. <laughs> Exactly. Well, believe me, no, none of no teachers listen to the exceptional conservative network. <laughs> believe me when I tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, um, you're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. This is Freestyle Finance Friday. She will be right back with more of the best of the best midday talk show in the world. Yes, it's Money Talk with Melanie. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Willie Lawson of the Willie Lawson Show here on the Exceptional Conservative Network. We have a brand new show on at 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. We are bound to make you think. We are bound to make you see things differently. We are bound to push you into action for not only your community, but your country. That's the Willie Lawson Show on the Exceptional Conservative Network, 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. See you there.
Now, Brownells, we know you may have only one shot to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. Hey, it's Jersey Joe. Kurt Griever, Common Sense. You can catch me every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, on shrmedia.com. It's every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, shrmedia.com. <laughs> We are back with Money Talk with Melanie, uh, and this is Freestyle Finance Friday on Money Talk with Melanie. And I, I just want to say, as chairman of the Exceptional Conservative Network, uh, you're listening to the most listened to daytime show on our network. It is Melanie's program, uh, and I am just honored and blessed that she would allow me to help produce her show this particular day. Apparently, she was desperate and chose me. So, welcome back to Money Talk with Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, 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 can, I cannot thank you enough for producing my show today because I, I, I did not have the ability to do so at all. And you're probably going to do a better job. No, I, no, <laughs> I definitely I really won't. Uh, but but I, I, so, want, I want to ask you this, Melanie. I, I know that you got a lot of stuff to talk about in terms of finance and literacy and all that other kind of stuff. And uh, you're into the numbers stuff or whatever. You know me. I'm kind of a dimwit. I, I don't know how I even come on and do programs. Uh, but uh, really, uh, <laughs> but in, in all sincerity, um, how is it now being so popular on a daytime uh, radio broadcast, and, and when you do Facebook uh, video, I mean, because I mean, what? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> it's just like it's like. You know what? First of all, you know what? I, I'm going to tell you the strangest thing. Okay, the, the strangest thing is that people seem to think I have a lot more power than I do. <laughs> like, I get the strangest questions. <laughs> Look for real. Like I, you would not believe like this. Well, you probably would because you know you're you're Don Vito and you know you're a baller like that. So you probably do understand this. But this is all all very new to me. I'm just like this this doe-eyed, you know, new uh, radio personality. So I'm not quite used to this stuff except except in the political realm. But you wouldn't believe the stuff, the questions and stuff that I get in my inbox. And I'm just like, who like who do you think I? Am exactly so. <laughs> it's, I, I, it's, that's the most surprise. I'm like, what, what do you think I have the power to do? They're like, you're super connected. Like somebody in the inbox me so was like, I, you're super connected. Blah blah blah. And I, I suppose that I am to some degree, but I, you know, that's not. I'm just not built. I'm not that person who uses. He like works those connections unless I absolutely need to, unless it's completely beneficial. Generally, when I do it's on behalf of someone else. Yeah. Um, not myself, but um, but that that's like the strangest part when people ask me about stuff and and ask me for favors and uh, you know try to like maneuver, like try to be sideways about it. Like I'm not smart, but that's another thing. Exactly. I'm like, I know I do a finance show, but you know I was a computer programming teacher. Like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of bright. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> kind of, you know, the, the IQ level is a little high. Yeah, that's just all we're saying. <laughs> right, right. So, you know, they'll try to be like all oh, asking you for something. And I'm like, no, one, why don't you just cut to the chase and B, one and B. And two, um, <laughs> You know, I, I, I'm not 
I'm not that I'm not that girl. Yeah. And I, I like I said, I guess I could be. You, you and I have had conversations about, you know, people that that surround us uh, yeah. that are you know in the media and in, in, in active in politics as as you and I are. Um, that definitely just just you know grind it out and just work every contact and every you know every opportunity to the hilt. And now I call them you know opportunistic bottom feeding worms. But that's me. That's you. That's right. And I'm not going to sound too judgmental. But <laughs> did I say opportunistic bottom just, feeding worms? Yeah, yeah. Just, just you know, so, uh, you know, you were at a loss for words. <laughs> Well, and the thing is, I, I know that that's really ambiguous and that it's very vague. It's not really sure how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, I, I, I want to talk with you today also uh, uh, about uh, a financial matter. It's the U.S. stock market, uh, which hit a new record yeah. high yesterday, uh, opening up this morning at a record high. Uh, and that's coming on major tax reform conversations that have been holding in Washington. You know for a fact that I had uh, two major lobbyists this week on tax reform on my radio program. Uh, and and I, I want you, if, if you could just broach with America's uh, public, uh, why is this tax reform so important in terms of the stock market and businesses in general? Well, the reason why it's important I'm sorry, I was hearing feedback. It threw me off. Um, the reason why it's important is because, number one, um, our, our tax rate, as far as businesses is concerned, is the highest in the world and that businesses get taxed for doing, for doing business um, with other countries outside the United States. That's, human, that's ridiculous. Okay, that's the corporate tax rate is 35%. So, 40% right off the top before they do anything else, before a company does anything else, um, they have to deal with that 35% tax. That that needs to be handled because I guess they're, they're the 1% and all companies are rich and um, liberals don't have a calculator and understand that, you know, that there's no money trade. Like businesses have to actually make that money. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so one of the things that Trump wants to do is to take that thirty-five percent down to fifteen percent, which it, which. So I'm sure it's not going to go down to fifteen percent, and but Bismid was the other day to who was he meeting with? He was meeting with someone. Yeah. Oh, the um, uh. Air, air airline CEOs he yes. was meeting with yesterday, mm -hmm. and he mentioned um, mentioned that tax rates were coming soon. That wasn't an accident. Yeah. So as soon as he, as soon as he said that, and, it, and he said really dramatic tax rates. Now my my good buddy uh, Sean Spicer, whom I love, <laughs> he just like owns the press. There's nothing more entertaining. Oh my god. Audience, if you have not taken the time to watch a Sean Spice, Spicer uh, press conference, like live, not like don't just watch like the highlights on the news when you get home from work. I'm telling you, like go on your lunch break at, at one, two o'clock, whenever it is that day. Find out what time it's going to be. Totally worth it. Oh, yeah. Go goodness. watch it. It is fantastic. It is indeed. <laughs> it, it is just great. We have we uh, have we have moved. We, we have moved from it being a simple question and ask to being the WWE. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a verbal WWE. You are so right. And he just, he completely owns them. So yesterday in, in, at the presser, uh, uh, he was getting asked questions about the tax reform. And, what he did, and, and of course, this is how the press does things. The question was something like, um, so when President Trump says that there's going to be tax forms coming soon, that he mentions the airlines, will these tax forms be only for the rich? Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, I don't know how he survives without just throat punching everyone in there. But <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
the way the for anyone who's ever been interviewed by the press, no, it, it, I, I mean, do they even know how few their questions are? Yeah. They don't even understand like how skewed and how they frame so that's what they did but he gets my point was that he explained that it that the tax forms that are tax reforms that are coming that, that president trump has planned are to be comprehensive which means that we're talking about not only corporate taxes and, and uh business taxes but uh personal taxes as well so that that's what uh what President Trump has in mind. Now, the effect that this has on the stock market, of course, is businesses are going to save money, they're going to be able to invest, and that's going to make the stock market go up, especially if there are businesses um, that that uh, investors anticipate will grow as a result. So they're going to they're going to buy, which you know, and, and the prices are kind of high right now. Yeah, you know, because of how high the stock market is. So it's incredible that. It's still growing, considering you know some of the prices these days. Now, it's going to be a little bumpy for a minute because you know whenever it, you have a, a shoot up like twenty thousand for the first time, whenever you have something like that, like a record breaking um, stock market situation, there is eventually going to be a correction. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, it, it probably you know sometime. This year, toward the end of this year, next year, something like that. But, uh, but that's to be expected, and that's that's the time when you kind of reevaluate. Don't don't panic if you're a long term investor. Um, but you also evaluate and see kind of what, what's what's cheap out there. It's like a fire sale. If you think about it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we you're yeah. lis you're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. This is Freestyle Finance Friday. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to be peppering her with some questions because she's so brilliant. I'm just going to listen to her. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, apparently, the Dow Jones is up about 58 points right now. Uh, and that's coming on the talk this morning about there being tax reform. But also, oil prices are up as well. Uh, they're up 1.5%, uh, almost 2%. Uh, and I'm wondering if you have noted a increase in the price of gasoline, and what does that do to the American people? I have noticed the increase in gasoline, and you know, while we tend to notice that at pocketbooks, and sometimes we notice it a lot. Like if you if you drive an SUV, you probably really notice it. <laughs> um, if you drive a, a tiny car like I drive, I drive a Beetle, which gets like I don't know 75 miles to the gallon. Um, <laughs> uh, you don't notice it quite, quite as much. But what I, I think people don't realize is that when oil prices increase, it affects a lot of other and prices of other things go up, such as plastics. Um, prices of other things go up. Uh, in general, merchandise goes up because of the cost of shipping, et cetera, et cetera, uh, for, from store from market from you know, the manufacturers to the marketplace. You know, all of those things are, are, are overhead for manufacturers and for retailers. And so whenever the price of oil goes up and the price of gas goes up, that's that's always going to affect our pocketbooks in more than one way. Like there there's an extension at the price of everything goes up, not just um, not just us, us, us paying for gas in our cars. And I think a lot of people don't um, necessarily recognize that connection. Exactly. Um, now, now, oil prices were stunningly low uh, at the end of the fourth quarter of last year, uh, and they began to rise towards the anticipation of Donald Trump becoming president. Um, do we want oil prices to be high, or or, or should they should they be low as they were uh, during the first? through fourth quarter of last year well well part of the reason why the oil prices were low you know there's there's a few theories behind that but part of it was because um the market was being manipulated manipulated by, by saudi arabia and and they have they have reasons for doing that it's a it's a matter of control so i, I think 
you know, you need to be just very careful about being too happy about the prices being low because that means that they, they, they got you, so to speak. People start buying more SUVs. People start, um, you know, spending on oil in ways that they have to kind of commit long term. And then they can slowly inch that price back up and make more money. They're very smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. But I, so, go ahead. I, I just want everyone to know that while Melanie's been on the air, this is this is the power of Melanie. Uh, stock prices have escalated uh, seventy-one points. Uh, we're up to seventy-one points uh, from fifty-point increase. So just in the past ten minutes. Of, Melanie talking about the stock market, it rose 20 points. That's the power of Melanie. <laughs> oh, yes. That's, that's, all, that's all totally me. That is totally me. Uh, <laughs> now, I was taking a look uh, at Reuters this morning, and it, oh, wow, I didn't, mean, I didn't realize it had gone that high. Mm -hmm. um, that oil prices rose about a dollar on mm -hmm. Friday. Mm -hmm. After after reports that OPEC members delivered more than ninety percent of the output cuts, ah ha ha, that mm -hmm. they pledged in a landmark deal. There mm -hmm. you go. Uh, that came into force in January. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes an awful lot of sense. It, it's production targets under the deal fell. Listen, look at that. Twenty nine point nine to one million barrels a day. There it is. That's why the prices went up. According to the average assessments for the six secondary, see, you know what? I'm looking at this and I'm thinking there's also a political aspect to this as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and there always is. You know, it, it, like I said before, it's a matter of control. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, and it's a matter of, you know, keeping us addicted to, um, to their oil. And you know, one of the things that Donald Trump has said about the, the places that we are, you know, the countries that we are protecting that happen to be oil-rich nations is that we should be getting a little a cut of that, you know? Yeah. Now, if I'm Saudi Arabia, I'm looking at that going, okay, if they're going to get oil from somewhere else, mm -hmm. if that's a possibility, we need to look out, manipulate ourselves in the, in, into being their only resource. Exactly. So, I, you know, I think that they're going to be looking at ways to do that. I am sure. Yeah, yeah. Positive. I, I would. But it's all a game. Exactly. I would really love if the doors were open on Virginia and the southern states, uh, as well as California, Oregon, and Washington, uh, open up offshore drilling. Uh, <laughs> and, and, well. Listen, as long as Donald Trump does not morph into a politician, which, listen, it's, that, that's, I, I think everyone who starts out to be a politician, I think, starts out with these altruistic goals. Usually, usually you don't start out as a president, right? Mm -hmm. You usually start out like, you know, city council or something like that. And then you kind of work your way up. But usually it's like some, some kind of something you believe in that's really important to you. And you um, and you get involved in politics, right? He yeah. starts off at, And then the higher you go up, such as the presidency, the more of a politician you tend to become because it's required. Yeah. So, and you start to realize that there are other factors involved than just the free market. You know, the political thing is a whole lot different. And, you know, we have a lot of dealings with Saudi Arabia that have nothing to do with oil. So, yeah. and that is a factor, whether you want to think about that ugliness or not. So, and it, and it is, it's not pretty. Some of the, you know, dealings and associations that we have with Saudi Arabia. But, um, yeah. so b because of that, that's the only thing that, like, kind of worries me that, that people are going to start being disappointed in some of the decisions that he makes uh, regarding regarding oil and oil prices and, and maybe not so much being energy independent. That's been the whole holdup for years. Environment, environment. That, that, that's an excuse. Exactly. That's not 
that's not the real reason. That's the that's the reason it's socially acceptable and like cuddly and, and furry and fuzzy and, and, and you know kitten and puppy like. But that's that's not the real reason. Ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to <laughs> Melanie Collette uh, of Money Talk with sorry. Melanie. This is uh, Freestyle Finance Friday. And I want you to know that Fox News is so threatened by TECN that they actually have uh, Dave Webb uh, and a, another black gentleman on at the same time as Melanie Collette. That's how powerful Melanie is. Listen, we'll be right back uh, with more, <laughs> more of the best of Money Talk with Melanie. Stay tuned. <laughs> If your PC causing major headaches, now there's an easy way to make your computer run like new again. Introducing System Mechanic, America's number one PC performance software. System Mechanic scans your entire PC for over 200 different types of errors. It then automatically fixes even the most stubborn and frustrating PC problems, restoring full speed and stability in minutes. Visit runlikenew.com to try it free. Good morning. I'm Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Okay, folks, that's not how it goes. I think I'm Shannon, and I you're so. Michael. Yeah. Okay. We are The Right Way with Shannon and Mike. Join us from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Live on SHR Media. And on TECN. Where we'll be talking about all kinds of things. From sports and politics. To food and entertainment. To money. Family. And anything else in between. Community, holidays, all kinds of things. It'll be great. Join us from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Hi, my name is Willie Lawson of The Willie Lawson Show here on the Exceptional Conservative Network. We have a brand new show on at 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. We are bound to make you think. We are bound to make you see things differently. We are bound to push you into action for not only your community, but your country. That's the Willie Lawson Show on the Exceptional Conservative Network, 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. See you there. The bloviating Zeppelin. He's big-footed enough radio shows to last a lifetime, courtesy of Sean, Clint, Ken, and Jersey Joe. Now it's time for him to waddle on his own two feet via the glorious SHR media. Gird thy loins for the bloviating Zeppelin's berserk bobcat saloon, coming soon to ossicles near you, Excelsior. Meet Jason. He was really excited to start growing his business with social media until he realized how complex and time-consuming social media can be. It's difficult to manage multiple social networks and accounts. It's hard to monitor what's happening on social media, follow discussions, and engage with new followers. It's time-consuming to publish updates throughout the day, track and analyze how effective posts are, respond to fans and followers in a timely manner, and gain new customers. The list seems to go on and on. Jason quickly becomes discouraged. How could he ever do all of this and still run a business? He was ready to give up on social media until he found eClincher, the easiest way to manage social media. Jason was amazed how straightforward and simple it is to use eClincher. With eClincher, Jason is now able to leverage the power of social media without having to dedicate several hours a day. He can easily organize all his social media accounts in one place, efficiently plan and schedule his posts ahead of time, engage with his followers, understand the effectiveness of his efforts with powerful analytics, find new customers, and much more. In order to tell your business's story, simplify the process of managing your social media, and analyze results, sign up with eClincher today.
Want to know the best kept secret in flea and tick control? It's the money you'll save with 1-800-PET-MEDS. Save 30, 40, even 50% on veterinary recommended brands for your pet and we'll deliver them free right to your door. And now you can get the safe and effective results of a top brand for even less with new Flea for X Plus. Four-way action to kill fleas, ticks, lice, and mosquitoes. Plus, it starts working in five minutes to one hour and is backed by our 100% happy guarantee. Call now or order online from 1-800-PET-MEDS. You're back. I'm back. We're back. You're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I am the chairman of the Exceptional Conservative Network and peon in chief today as I do production work for Melanie. That's how powerful she has become. Uh, even the chairman of TECN has to do her production work. Money Talk with Melanie is Freestyle Finance Friday. Glad to have you here. Uh, yes, the- yes, the business. The business diva ha- has everyone working for her today. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, at, at my beck and call. There the you go. at my beck and call today. You know, I, I like the way you, you ring that little bell, boy. People start running right directly to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what I, I want to talk with you. The only one it actually applies to. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say the only one that actually applies to is my little fur diva, uh, my dog. <laughs> oh. the, the only person, only animal who runs me, the only thing who runs me is my is my little puppy dog. There you go. <laughs> right now, not very happy, but oh, 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 <laughs> she's oh, managing. Uh, I, I hear that every time Lonnie Poindexter's voice Lonnie is Poindexter. sounded, uh, that you can actually put your dog to sleep. Yeah, is, is that true? She... She curls up and and get, she gets in her bed and curls up and and is knocked out. I think she I think she finds his voice very soothing. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. So, ladies and gentlemen, you will find his voice so soothing on four at four o'clock through six o'clock on the drive time show in the afternoon. Lonnie Poindexter, Poindexter, forgive me, and Ralph J. Chittam Sr. on the Right Guys, uh, where they are always right, no matter how wrong, they are always right. So just want to let you know that, because uh, that's absolutely. that's just a man thing. Absolutely. It's an absolute man thing. <laughs> Breaking up. <laughs> Speaking of numbers, you're gonna have to deal with audience. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna have to deal with being being one of only two uh, females on, on, on the network right now. This is what I have to put up with. <laughs> Uh, one of, uh, one yeah, talk with you last week, uh, last Friday, good good numbers came out uh, regarding employment. Over two hundred fifty seven thousand new jobs created in the last month, the month of January. Uh, now that's coming off a rock bottom hundred and seventeen thousand in December. Uh, what's the difference between December and January? Is it really Donald Trump? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that, well, listen, that, that's one of the things, and, and, and part, one of the things is Donald Trump. So, you know, there's a lot of optimism out there. And the re- and it's not Donald Trump, of course, in and of itself, in and of himself, that's the factor. Uh, one of the factors is that because Donald Trump is our president, one of the, thi- one of the things that has really been holding down businesses I mean, we just got got finished talking about tax reform a little bit ago, but the Affordable Care Act has been killing businesses uh, in, in so many ways. Uh, you have the, the uh, requirement that if you have 50 employers, uh, excuse me, if 50 employees are over, that you have to uh, abide by the Affordable Care Act. You have so so a lot of p- people um, were only keeping 49. You know, mm-hmm. people. They, you know, there, there's all these requirements and all these regulations. And, and, and here's the thing that a lot of people don't realize about not only the Affordable Care Act, but a lot of laws. And this is why it's so important to pay attention and to vote. 
Um, once a law is passed, then it goes down to the regulators. And the regulators don't have to, the people who write the regulations for these laws, mm -hmm. they don't have to, those regulations don't go through Congress. Those, they, they don't, you know, nobody, you know, bets those regulations. And those regulators are really powerful. So unless someone challenges, specifically challenges those, um, those regulations in court as being unconstitutional, you're, you're you're at you're at the mercy of those regulations and so you know one of the reasons i think the number was like that of course is because uh, of, of the executive order pushing back or, or rolling back some of the most um egregious parts of the affordable care act that were making it uh, very hard for businesses i believe the um mandate was was rolled back as well which um, made everybody pay a penalty if you did not uh, carry any kind of insurance. So yeah. that, that's making uh, businesses very optimistic and now they don't have to worry. Now they can have more employees. Yeah. You know, you, you go into a restaurant or something and you wonder why you have one uh, with And you're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. Apparently, we are having some complications with technology. Uh, Why? Yes. Okay. You know, so, I think that's one of the reasons why is that now, you know, people are hiring. Exactly. And which is a good thing. You know, the, the, the other thing I, I, I want to ask you regarding those particular numbers, uh, a lot of people are talking, people are talking. on... On the, in New York and D.C., uh, that this is a temporal thing, that this is just a sexy little response to the fact that Donald Trump was elected president. Uh, the economy is not strong enough to continue having 257,000 people hired in a month. Uh, do you see that to be the case? No, and I'm going to tell you why. They're, they're basing that on... Uh, my suspicions, well, first of all, they're basing, basing it on being partisans. Um, and they're basing it on the growth that they've seen, um, you know, over the last over the last eight years, which hasn't exceeded 3%. Uh, now, is it going to be gangbusters all the time? No. Is, is this a bunch of hype? Also, no. Because the man is literally practicing what he preaches and keeping the promises that he made, which, which is which is not something that politicians tend to do. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, usually under normal circumstances, when someone just gets elected it, it, and there's like this honeymoon period and every, everyone's happy, um, it, it's temporary. But I, I don't believe that to be the case uh, this time because Donald Trump is, is, is adhering to what he said he would do. And I, I, I will say this about the man. He will not fail. Mm -hmm. If for no other reason, because his, his ego will not allow it. So if this, if what he's planning on doing economically d doesn't work, like if this doesn't work, I can guarantee you that he's got, you know, plans B, C, and D mm -hmm. to do as well. And, and that's the difference between how bureaucrats think and how private business people think. Mm -hmm. You know, private business people think in terms of having a business plan, having a structure, and having a way that they're going to handle things in different scenarios because it's their money, it's their investment. You know, bureaucrats don't have that same attitude because it's public money. So I, I think that this will not be um, as short-lived for those reasons that I just mentioned. Uh, Melanie, w want to broach one other question with you. I, I listened to you on the right guys yesterday, uh, and this has to do with financial literacy. You state that children should wait until they're in twelfth grade to study financial literacy, and I have a begging of a boon with you on that. I think that kids should learn about the stock market in fourth grade. Yes, the chairman listens to all of the shows. So <laughs> I see. I see. Now, well, let, allow me to allow me to clarify. Clarify. I, I, what I meant by that was, that I, I, first of all, I agree with you because I think that I think conceptually, I'll agree with you partially. Put it that way. Oh. I, I think from a, a conceptual standpoint, 
um, that from fourth grade you can learn about the stock market because the principles of the principles of the stock market can certainly be learned um, early on. Um, what I was getting at was the, the, the um, specific curriculum literacy that talks about things that students are not going to be worried about or able to utilize until their senior year or you know the years immediately after that. And so they're generally not as interested freshman year. They're like, I'm two years away from buying a car. You know, two years in teenage time is forever. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, a whole day is. You know what I mean? A whole um, day is forever. You know, <laughs> right, right. So, you know, I, and, and they, got taught, they got taught about everything, health insurance, car insurance, um, renter's insurance, all, all of that stuff, budgeting, and, and not important, in freshman year, but believe me, by the time they're juniors and seniors, they're going to be thinking about that. How to buy a car, whether or not you should buy a used car or a new car, and, and what the benefits are. They're thinking about that stuff when they're juniors and seniors. So, mm -hmm. and they can literally use that information, you know, real time. So that that's all I was saying. It's just from a teaching, um, from a teaching perspective perspective as far as what it, how that information is most beneficial for the student. It would be better if it was taught earlier. Now what they should, I mean, excuse me, if it was taught later, what they should do is take languages and move that down mm -hmm. to earlier ages mm -hmm. because studies have shown that kids, kids learn um, second languages a lot easier when they're younger. And I don't know why schools haven't done that yet, but, and then um, have financial literacy taught later. But that's just my not so humble opinion. <laughs> so so, so are, are you trying to tell me that a third and fourth grader should not learn about the index funds or the New York Stock Exchange of how to convert currency. Uh, and so when you're trading overseas markets and then converting them back uh, in domestic markets uh, so that they can get in the in, on the opening bell of the stock exchange. It's, is that too complicated for a third grader? I think. <laughs> I think that that, that that might be slightly above their understanding, like a, a, a little bit. <laughs> and if, if, if it's not, then that kid needs to be at MIT <laughs> and, not, and not in like, you know, first grade. <laughs> now, listen, two minutes, uh, you got three minutes before the close of your show. You get two minutes in terms of conversation. I, I just want to give you one last question. And what was it like interviewing Ebony Williams? Oh my goodness! First of all, she's she, she's fantastic. It, 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 I, you know, she, she's wonderful. It was just like talking to her when I met her. I met her at an event uh, during inauguration week. Literally, she 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 just pulls up a chair right next to me, mm -hmm. and I, I look over and she's sitting there, and we strike up a conversation. You're Ebony Williams, and I'm sure she knew that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for alerting me. That, that's who she was. <laughs> I, you know, I did the typical thing that you do when you meet somebody famous. Yeah. You're Ebony Williams. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a lovely conversation, and that's how she ended up on the show. But she was she was fantastic. She's wicked smart. I don't know if the rest of the audience um, was able to hear that show. You can certainly um, hear it uh, on uh, my speaker page on Money Talk for Melanie. You can hear the podcast. Um, but uh, money talk with Melanie. But she she attended college at 16 years old, and started her undergraduate degree at 16 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, just amazing. Uh, she and she's a lawyer, and she's wicked smart, very balanced in her commentary, which is one of the things that I like about her. She she really is not very partisan, and she explains that uh, one of the reasons why she thinks she her theory on why she's like that is because she's a lawyer. And she has an ability to see both sides of things. And so she's always been an independent and she thinks she's probably going to remain that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, it was just a really good conversation. Um, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay. Well, I turn the show over to you to close out. Uh, and I thank you so much for letting me be your guest and producer on today's Melanie Money Talk with Melanie. Thank you so much, Mr. McClinton. Uh, we will be, uh, let's see, if, if, let's see, what should I say? All right, so <laughs> if you would like to be a guest on Money Talk with Melanie, please hit up the Exceptional Conservative website um, and cl either click on the Contact Us 
link or give us a, a call on the phone number there. We've had many, many wonderful guests like Ebony Williams. We have, we've had CEOs, owners, entrepreneurs, and um, I would love to have you on the show if you are interested. We're, we're booked for the next couple of weeks, but I'd love to get you in. So uh, please uh, hit us up. We'll have a great conversation. Remember, it's important because it is your money. You've been listening to Money Talk with Melanie, live on TECN. Good night and God bless.